and life struggles. I think the world is unfair. We're all slaves, so everybody's dealing with that unless they are Romney plus rich. Yeah, well, I'm just saying they're not exactly independently wealthy. Well, you know, no, definitely, I agree with you. I, I agree with that from the start. I'm just saying that there's an interesting, you know, Like derived energy, you know, I mean, he had his stuff together, he, he, you know, he didn't have a lot of money, but it's like, oh, but here's a way I can go around the world and try stuff out, you know, figure things out, people, that's usually people that I know that have things figured out, they never get rich, but they find a lifestyle and a job and it keeps them going, and there might be a crisis, but it's not like one crisis to the next, or such an extreme poverty, like, living in the ghetto where it can literally be impossible to get out even if you do all the right things. So, But I don't know what to say about it. I'm not disagreeing with your characterization. I'm just saying I found out. I mean, I found, not out, I found, I see a pattern there with the kind of, like, yeah. I think you guys have enough comfort, you have enough comfort to see misery. It's not like you guys are in the middle of all being tortured. Well, I know, but, but that is, this is part of the interesting conversation, is just the fact that some of this you can't explain to other people. I mean, I can't... It's like Doc Spook has his personal experience. I don't know how susceptible to religious notions he would have been, say, before he started seeing words and letters and respect stars and all this stuff. Maybe he would have been... I mean, you know, maybe he's more predisposed to it by, by his nature throughout his life. Maybe he had a certain comfort or a certain ability to be bendable to these kinds of stories. Where I was automatically be incredibly cynical, you know, through my whole life, through those kind of stories, through my personal experience. And it's like you have these personal experiences, it's like you watch your pet dog and you watch your sister die, and you see you know, some other thing happen. Horrible thing, but the horrible experience that changes you forever, and blah blah blah. And if it always require that, does, 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 this, does this conversation always have to be about our personal reference? And that is kind of a dilemma, right? Because I could say that at least 50 percent of the anti natalists like, like Mike's kind of an exception, because Mike does seem really together, right? He's good looking, he doesn't seem to have any little problems, he's not broken legs, he's scripted, he's not like. I mean, camera jumping, you know, he doesn't have a hunchback, you know, he doesn't have the same kind of like, you know, the rest of us are kind of broken, some of us, you know, like, like old families, and kind of see, like, he's been through some shit, I've been through some shit, and psychologically, and all that kind of crap, some of these other people have to get mental institutions, and all that bullshit, and, you know, so, I mean, you know, we still sort of had to have a personal space of it to get here. And, and I, if it always takes that, you always have to have it personally happen to you before you get it. You have to be in like the car accident to get, oh yeah, a car accident is bad. You know, it's almost like in some respects it almost has to be that. Somehow people really have to have it rubbed right in their nose before they can smell the shit. Well, I don't know. My whole life it's been there, so... I had, like, a uh, depression a few years ago. Uh, um, not, like, crippling, but pretty... pretty clinical. Um, but, no, I mean, I haven't had, like, a horrible life or anything, I, I wouldn't say, in comparison to how bad it could get, but... I mean, I, mean, I don't know, I mean... You know, I, I don't know how to answer. Like, I think, I think it takes a certain amount, maybe. I mean, before you say, you know, yeah, suffering sucks. I mean, I I can't be the judge though because I, I I don't know how to judge like what's happened to me in comparison to other people. You know, so I maybe it's maybe it's more of a matter of standard, like. You brought that up too. Maybe it's more of a matter of like how much. Like even for even if you're a you could argue that the more anti males the more likely to be perfectionist. You know that kind of argument. You make the argument that you know, yeah, anti males are sort of perfectionists. They see the flaws in life and see 
here, they have a higher standard, they say, why would I just swap them? Um, well, okay, I don't want to be offensive or take advantage of the fact that you can't kick me. But I, my impression a little bit, though you're all different, and, and mind you, I like a lot of the antinatalists, like old fans, one of my favorite people on YouTube and stuff, but you all seem just enough stable and comfortable enough that yes, you've tasted enough of the reality of life to firsthand probably, but you're just comfortable enough to feel guilty about all the people that are in truly, and all the animals that are in truly terrible situations. And you're just comfortable enough to have that sort of, uh, that the noble, the, the, the uh, you know, the Lord's guilt, the liberal, you know, prince and princess that are, feel guilty about, and of course they're still going to, you know, enjoy all their wealth. They have no choice really about that if you think about it. So they feel bad. And there's, that's your pain is that you see the suffering and that you're just well enough to... <laughs> no, I thought you might agree with that. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but that to me seems like a less charitable idea for me to say that not just you remember we're talking kind of statistically you and everyone all the people the ethelists more than antinatalists right you know it's like defense by fear it's that a terror that a horror but that's you're saying you're selfish you're kill. worried you'll be in the situation I, I think you actually have compassion for other people you're worried about the fact that the situation exists and how you would feel if it happened to you yeah you have to you're it's saying it's all personal it's all self oriented it's not self oriented but you have to internalize anything to become passionate about it. there's no other way to become passionate there's no other way to give a shit it's sex to make it personal you have to make what you care about Part of you. But Gary, I and see you all the time I care know. about little men. That's why they're mostly vegetarians, Spiro. They're not vegetarians Sorry. just out of some sort of placation yeah. of guilt. It's a I sincere vegetarians. That's sense amazing. of obligation. A sincere sense of obligation. Right. It's not some atonement in some way of saying, I'm a good person. That's not what they're doing. Right. right. Well, I like that part because I don't mean to minimize it. I mean, I mean to avoid the idea that I'm afraid I'll be in that situation and it's that selfish. I think it is egalitarian. I think these are people that feel empathy directly. I believe that's an actual emotion of humans. And so, you know, I don't want to minimize it as though it's – as a matter of fact, I'm trying not to minimize it. I think if it's too much just the fear thing, then it, it becomes selfish, like I'm afraid of death, therefore – Let's just all go. And that's different. I don't see that among, you know, ethelists. Well, they're not looking for people to go with them. They're not saying misery right. loves company. They're not doing any of that crap. They're just acknowledging yeah. the fact that it's by luck alone, <clears throat> by luck alone, okay, that they are not in that condition. And it's a few humble recognition that this hasn't been a fair game, that this isn't a fair fight, that they've gotten off lucky and they're still not satisfied or grateful, and that should terrify yeah. you a little bit. That's what I see. I see. When you're sitting here saying this sucks, okay, and you think you're lucky, well, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Right. No, and that's what I'm trying to put words on, too. Yeah, exactly. I've noticed that there's this idea that, holy shit, my situation isn't that great. It gives me plenty of trouble, and actually... I'm doing okay, and I have figured out a way to handle it, and 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 it gets a lot worse. I'm in the top 70 percentile of of handling it, or whatever the percentile, you know, over 50. There's all these 90 percent or whatever it is through this horror, and that I mean. That's my paraphrase of trying to say the same thing you're saying. It's like I don't have it so bad, and this is as good as it gets. Screw that, and that's what I see in the ethelist part, and. Maybe antinatalism, but in this YouTube, the ethelism community that sort of, yeah, well, I can get, you know, has, has a character. You know, messing with the word guilt because it's not, you know, it's not guilt yeah. in some traditional I made it happen thing. I need to atone for myself right. thing. It's not that kind of atonement bullshit. It's a, it's a different kind, I think, of, of, of like I said.
said, I'd rather you call me. Yeah. I'd rather you call me fearful than guilty. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I don't really like that concept, guilt, either. And I see how, why you would say that, too, because I think guilt is sort of a negative thing. It's more, it could be put this way, yeah. It's just a sense of futility. Like, I'm not saying I have it so bad. I'm saying if what I have is not so bad, it must not get very good. You know what I mean? It's like this relative thing to a person, a, a, a futility and a resignment to if this is how it is when you're doing better than average, that's not good enough. The average is not good enough. You add everything up over the average, you get the average. If it's a net zero or net negative, like you guys would say, and that's where the, all of that comes from. But, yeah, it's an interesting uh, group, too. I, it's also just interesting because we've talked so much about life and death and basically suicide issues, um, which is hard to do online. I mean, for years, it's like I wouldn't touch that issue because you don't know people's approach to it. Usually you're talking to somebody that might be in the middle of basically some episode. You're not talking about the reasons in life. Whereas you guys are all like, it's presented a platform where we can discuss these issues of to be or not to be without sending anybody over the edge. I personally, I mean, that's great. Edge. You can't really fail, okay? I mean, there's, there's no way you can fail sending somebody over the edge. I'm sorry. Well, the, right, but you're just making an ironic statement. You know what I'm talking about. It's like, I mean... Um, you, you guys claim to not be on the edge of suicide, and you're not, or else a lot of you are gone. It's a presumption of culture, okay? It's this cultural notion that you're better off being 50 years old. There's no actual factual evidence that it's a good idea to be 50. So yeah. the very idea that you're somehow better off living is just a cultural notion. It isn't a fucking logical notion. I mean, no one's demonstrated with anything logical that somehow the dead are well, going to... Oh, you're not taking me. credit for what I'm I saying. Mean, we agree all on that. Fun, fun, fun. So, I mean, there's no evidence of that. So I'm just saying... Yeah, but your urge... We can't I have think your urge to disagree with me. Your urge to always disagree no matter what is you're not taking credit. I'm saying that your form of this antinatalism, ethylism and whatnot, and the whole group of people, the various people... Um, that have taken part in it, you deserve credit for providing a forum where we can even discuss that kind of issue, the to be or not to be, in a pretty safe environment. I mean, there have been people like Heron Church who have said they're thinking about suicide, and, you know, there is no suicides except for I don't believe that derived energy did commit suicide. But if he did, I think being in an Indonesian prison had something to do with it. It wasn't because he was just playing around with something he couldn't handle. In other words, we're actually having a reasoned discussion about that topic. And that itself to me is an accomplishment that you guys get to take credit for it. Very point that our life has become so pitifully underappreciated and it's all propaganda anyway and so why save somebody from their suicide to to be forgotten anyway look look at look at derived energy dies in an indonesian drug rehabilitation center and there isn't even one single english i know death. not one what the hell is that how could that be one english, english what to the fact that this guy died in a foreign yeah. country um in a, a form of incarceration and no one gave it to Not one story. I mean, I didn't necessarily expect it to catch as a scandal, because I know better. Um, but I am surprised, because I have kept looking, and I expected some English announcement of, you know, what the one or two stories in the Indonesian press said. Oh, yeah, a British guy died, you know. And even if it was like, oh, he's probably doing heroin or whatever, and false, they, there isn't even one. No, I know, but if no, I went to know. England... I, you know, that, that was such a wake-up call to me that, gee, aren't we, haven't we become oh so fucking irrelevant is that, you know, you can die in a foreign country in, in a fucking rehabilitation center and nobody gives a rat's ass. Well, if I went yeah. to England and I, I died in England, no one's going to write a story about it. I think that you guys find Indonesia so radically different that 
that because he died there in that cause that you would want a story about it, but but you know, I no. no? Suicide, oh, no. In this county, if somebody commits suicide, it makes the, it makes the newspaper yeah. for that alone. Okay, so the exactly. fact that he dies in a rehabilitation center is usually going to be on the news in this country. So I think that's kind of a bogus argument. But I, I, think, we, I think we should be yeah. concerned when our our people go to another country, uh, end up in prison for a for a, a fucking marijuana joint. And and then end up dead. I think that should be a news story. Yeah. Well, you, you probably yeah, got it in the obituary. If somebody from Hilo travels and dies on their trip, it makes it back as a local news for a day that so and so from Hilo, blah blah blah, died in Thailand. I mean, I don't understand why nothing. I mean, there could have been a story, but nothing on the internet from the UK. You know, English speaking, I mean, I'm really thinking he's a UK citizen. Somebody finds out, you know what I mean? A computer these days is spitting out, oh, one of your guys died, and here's where he was. And it's at least a few lines in a story, and it shows up in the news searches. I I find it bizarre, personally. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, it's sort of a wake up call to just how irrelevant we have become. I mean, human beings are useless, you know, industry, industry, for industry, for this, for that. I mean, we're, our functionality has been diminished, and we are, we are, we, there is a point where we are going to be worth less than the synthetic humans being created in Japan. I mean, if we're on the market, if you could actually put real humans and synthetic humans on a, on a block to be auctioned off, I would argue that people will bid more for the synthetic. Mm. Did you see? Did you see anything on that uh, movie that just came out? Her. It's called yeah, uh, "Quote Unquote Her." I didn't watch that, and I haven't done it yet, so I guess I better go see it. What about it? I uh, I think you're gonna be pretty pissed off. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, all these movies disappoint the hell out of me. So. But I why? I yeah. watch it James, why? Well, tell me, what's it about? No, I, I think. Well, I don't know if you guys see it, and I don't want to. Uh, I love spoilers. Spoil away. away. Go ahead and spoil away. Go ahead and spoil away. Well, well the guy. Me. I, I, you life. can't spoil movies for me. I, I watch movies for lots of reasons, but surprises isn't really why I watch it. The guy falls in love with his operating system, this artificial intelligence, but the thing doesn't have a body, and you know it's like he's just like talking to this voice. And it's like, you know, males are typically, I mean, almost always visually stimulated. So, and then he starts having sex with the thing. And I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to say it was a shitty movie because of that thing, but there was just so many illogical things in it from my understanding of artificial intelligence, but, um, and the capabilities of it in the future. But, um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, they do tend to mess up those kind of stories. There's that one with Robin Williams, um, something man. Uh, Bicentennial man. Bicentennial man or something. Yeah, Bicentennial man or something. Um, and they I want to hear what Doss uh, Spook thinks. They turn that into mush, you know, in terms of, you know, they made him into such a silly human in the end. He was just a silly, a silly human. He wasn't even a, he was turned him into a, I don't know, a dancing cupcake or something. I mean, he lost all connection to some sort of rational thing and just became some kind of silly, irrational, mushy, gooey, you know, poop. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like her. It's all mushy and stuff, you know? You'd think that the, the robot would do... It would be incapable of, you know, emotion. Sorry, my dog's kicking something. Hold on. Or, or else you would think that the the robot would know, oh, this is where I go into pretend I love you mode. And okay, yes, I say, what do I say again? I say, ooh, 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 yes, deeper, harder. Oh, 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 thank you. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so yeah, you teach the robot how to mimic, um, you know, to, have to, to, to fake an orgasm just like any other woman. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, yeah, this sounds like a really, this movie will piss me off. Yeah, it, it, it'll, it'll piss you off because the thing, it doesn't even have a body. So, like, this guy is, like, the most 
The, the guy's like this super sensitive guy. How does he like, have sex with it? How does he have sex with it? If it doesn't have a body. Exactly. Well, he like talks to it, and he like starts like. Well, people you know, have phone sex. Have phone sex. Have phone sex. I mean, people have phone sex. Okay, okay. Yeah, but usually you imagine the the person you're talking to at least has a body. I guess he probably but can do that. The same body they actually have. But well, I think if my one, operating so system assumed. starts talking to me, and yes, I can do it too. I can I can imagine the body. No problem. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess, I mean, they just didn't go into it. Yeah. That's just, right, I keep forgetting, you're the lawnmower man, you're all into the cyber world thing. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, whatever, I can, I can look anything, I can rub up against anything, right, so what the hell, I don't have a problem that way. Okay, James, back to you. I don't really have to have the actual, you know, whatever, so yeah, I can play along, but I'm just saying, I'm not really somebody for the auditory thing, you know, the auditory thing isn't my yeah. primary, you know, I'd rather just do the, you know. Okay, James, back to you. Well, it was written by uh, the Spike Jones guy. I don't know if he wrote it or directed it. So he did, he's the <laughs> same guy that did John Malkovich. So I know you like John Malkovich in Mendham, but I think, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to tell you that you're going to like it or not. You might like it, but. I, I like mean, John it, Malkovich being John Malkovich just because it was such a boldly bizarre idea. It's a brilliantly weird idea. So that's all yeah. I like that movie for is that it was so insane and insane. But it really wasn't a great movie. It was just a great movie in terms of this is a bizarre fucking movie. I think what was weird about it is I rewatched it. I think we've discussed this and just how bad it was. I hadn't remembered he locks his girlfriend in a cage and stuff. It's like Clockwork Orange levels of demented in that movie, in a way. I mean, not quite that bad, but I mean, it's really. And uh, and yet it just seems like a funny little science fiction idea, and isn't this funny? Yeah, yeah so it's, it's like you said, it's quirky. It's believable at the same time, though. Like he, the guy. Yeah, no, I thought it was. Oh, yeah. No, I think it's a great film. Like it's a classic. I I think it's just in every way a great film. Yeah, it's good. But it is weird. Hard to explain. No genre. Oh to wait, it. wait a sec. Okay, now hang on. Gary, it's don't say anything. Piero, don't say anything. I want James to finish his his thought on that movie okay sorry go ahead am i the only one who saw it her yeah i think you guys so. i haven't seen it no i heard about it yeah i mean um i'm not going to say it was a, a piece of shit i mean it the concept is i mean the concept truthfully has been done before by um different uh it's been done in other movies and it's been done in the twilight zone um a couple, a couple Twilight Zone episodes explored the concept, but I guess this movie, you know, it, it hasn't been explored in a while, so it's, it's not your cliche, like, you know exactly what's going to happen. There are some things that happen that are kind of surprising or whatever, but... But isn't it, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, but, but isn't it sort of evidence of exactly the gripe I'm having, though, is that they're going with the wrong end of this whole virtual thing, right? I mean... What if they made that movie and the voice came with, you know, some attachment to put on your penis or, you know, some kind of virtual hardware? Well, I'm not, you know, you think it's funny, but I'm just saying, right? Isn't that all oh, you need to ask for is these synthetic, sensual experiences? So if you got into some, you know, into a deprivation tank and you were hooked up to some electrodes and the computer controlled what you were, how you were stimulated, I'm just saying that. That's the real virtual experience. Well, you're you don't right. need the body then, right? You don't need the computer to have a body if it's essentially manipulating you. Okay, you, you should you should be, you know, apologetic for interrupting because we still am cutting you off. <laughs> uh, come on, James, lay it on us. The whole story, real fast. Boom, boom. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, he brings up a good point. I guess you don't really need the body. You know, you just need a brain, probably. I mean, you could just do it all as a hallucination or whatever. You don't even need any, you don't even need a thing to talk, you don't even need like an audio mechanism. You just need a brain stimulated in a, a hologram or something, you know, or virtual reality. So you don't even need any of that. But anyway, yeah, it's just, I don't know. The, the, the main character for me just wasn't believable enough. Um, and I don't know, there's just, little things in there that, that were kind of 
stupid. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm being too critical of it, but you know, it's not horrible, but it wasn't like <clears throat> as spectacular as everyone was saying it was going to be. Like, you know, the Matrix had like DOS computers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because yeah, if we were pretending to be 1990 or something, you know, you know, it, it's almost like you're saying, like with a movie like this, that yeah, you know, Max Headroom or whatever his name was, right? I mean, that's like 20 years ago now. You're saying that this new computer that has a personality of its own couldn't even come up with an image of itself. You know, that it couldn't even synthesize an image for itself. Right. Exactly, yeah. Why wouldn't, because uh -huh. the, the OS, the operating systems, all are different. They all have different personalities, so why wouldn't because they come? Really, because it's really a metaphor for a guy with schizophrenia that falls in love with Siri. Exactly. It's his hallucinations. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Whatever the Siri point is. is the, Siri is, it's all based on this thing, they can't, you know, Apple's latest phones have this female uh, artificial intelligence kind of interface that you can ask it, you know, what's the popular population of Burundi, and it, you know, it uses, it sends that a voice clip to Apple and analyzes it and tries to send you a result, and this movie is kind of like the I Got Mail of that. Well, I'm just saying, it's a 20 year old idea that, and they haven't yeah. improved on it. You know what I'm saying? They haven't taken the, they haven't taken the next step that we've already, we've already been well, there 20 years ago. What about this idea of synthesizing some parts of human personality? And so now well, you're saying, well, why couldn't they integrate what we've done 20 years no, ago? They, they, they took what we've done 20 years ago out and put in artificial intelligence. They, so what's they did the point that with doing metal. That? They did that with Battlestar Galactica. The Cylons are like humans, and they fall fall in love with the humans and make sex with them. And I mean, I, I think they've completed the idea also in Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, well, Galactica was a stupid movie. Uh, <laughs> well, that's that's not know. the point. But. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Attica. <laughs> more like it, but whatever, that was another dumb movie. So yeah, Piro, if the thing, if like, if the guy, if the main character was schizophrenic or whatever, then it would be much more believable, but he's not schizophrenic, so, and it's just like... Well, not in the movie, but I'm saying it's about this kind of, I think, I mean, that's just the way I take it, I know you could take it however you want, it's just like... Um, you've got mail as a romantic comedy, but I see it as a, a story about two people with personality disorders that are codependent that uh, meet online. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just a matter, it depends if you're deconstructionist or not, I guess. No, I don't believe it. Um, and it ruins every good movie for me. <laughs> Who's Tom? Did he say Tom Hanks? Well, he was in I, You Got Mail, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all I was saying. But it wasn't good. It, it reminds me, I just saw the the uh, Jobs biography movie that just came out. God, that sucks. That also is just like for people that want to have a reason to explain their wonderful iPhone. Isn't it amazing? The stupidest movie. Why, why yeah, was it stupid? all very disappointing. I don't know if you've seen Gravity yet. Mm. Why, why was it stupid? Was it too oh. jobsy oriented or was it, I mean, what, why, I mean, what Well, yeah, I don't think it really showed the good part of the story that in the, his biography could be made into a good story. And what it did show, especially the last part of it was kind of long, is just things that are interesting because, look, I have an iPhone. That's what it's about, honey. Look, that's where my iPhone, yeah, I have that iPhone. Yes, I like smooth lines too. Look, it's right here in my iPhone, what they're talking about. It was lame. And then it just got everything wrong and basically it glorified him in a stupid way because he was a big asshole. Everybody even that loves him knows he was an asshole. And they, of course, backed off in a Hollywood fashion, even though it's the 21st century. And you could go ahead and make a hit piece that it, people, I don't know. It's well, okay. Did you guys see the movie? Lot. Did you guys see the movie Winter's Bone by chance? 
Winter, no, winter what? Winter's Bone. Sounds familiar, but I'm sure I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, uh, real familiar. Yeah, I boner. Yeah, I had one of those last night. A winter boner. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I I think you guys would like it just because it's really a, kind of a depressing film about people living in Arkansas that are all in the outback area, the the slums, and it's it's pretty depressing. So you guys might find that appealing. Yeah, I always wanted to shoot them all, so that doesn't work for me. I'm really sick of what you call it. Yeah, hillbillies and hucklebillies and, <laughs> you know, just fuck them. Okay. See, the funny I thing still, what... I can still probably watch, like, uh, you know, some Jerry Cooper movie where he, you know, lives on the mountain and shit. But, um, yeah, I'm just so sick of fucking ignorant people. I don't know. I'm a real movie lover, and so every time I hear you guys cut cut down these movies, I sit there and I think, I bet I would watch Jobs and and like it, and I bet I would like this her movie, and you know, I really like Vice. You like all I movies? I, I I feel like I like almost every movie that I see. Interesting. Yeah, well, I hate them all because I'm rational and I apply logic to the plot and say that can't happen and that would never happen. And I loathe some and love others because I'm discerning. You know, there's no way that chick would fall for Tom Hanks. No fucking way. I mean, my brain knows that automatically. That this isn't working for me. There's no way she's going for that guy. Well, plus, I don't like insipid things. So there's that. So there really was no way to make that movie well, as far as I was concerned. You know, they're always just insulting my intelligence. All these movies are an in, insult to my intelligence. Like, what? You don't think I just saw you do that? It doesn't make any sense. Like, they, like I said, I watched that Gravity movie and you're saying, God damn, she looks good for 49. And after that, there's nothing good you could say about the movie. <laughs> it's stupid. I'm a scientist, and I'm alone in space, and I'm all scared, and there's nobody to pray for me. I mean, oh, fuck. Oh, scientists in space now, and they're worried about no one being able to pray for them. I mean, shit. Does that really, does that worry somebody on Earth? You're alone in space, and your biggest concern is there's no one to pray for you. I mean, who could write something that bad? Underfoot? Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> all right, you caught me. Yeah, I just found really an image on my computer the other day. I still must have the video. I still want to see that movie. I actually found the image where I had, you know, Thunderfoot in the bikini with the two chicks in the swimming pool. And I found the image from the video, so I might still have the video on my hard drive. I have to find that video. He's such a fucking hypocrite. Well, I feel I know exactly what's going on, which is that conferences are like happening party scenes for some people, and he doesn't want, he doesn't like the idea that that would be taken away from him. It's definitely something you get with low watt celebrity is that you, there's a lot of parties you go to a conference like that. If he has to be nervous about that, then what's the fun of being a celebrity? Yeah, he gets to take advantage of drunk women. You know, where, where, yeah. you know, and he doesn't want somebody scrutinizing, you know, taking advantage of drunk women. Yeah. No, it's true. It's that obvious. It really is that obvious. Because he's in a status position in those situations where he's in the position that's just naturally taking advantage of that. And he knows that. Yeah, he just doesn't want anybody. He's like I say, he just doesn't want to Thanks for liking my mohawk. This has been a version of Piero and Amanda. So, hope you enjoyed it. But it's not like that. If he was, if 